Open Shorty's Path First protocol is a link state protocol that uses link state advertisements, LSAs, to advertise information to its neighbours, where a link describes how the router's interfaces are connected together. Now, on Junos devices, there are four link types, NBMA, point to multipoint, LAN, which is the broadcast link type, and point to point. But as we won't be looking at frame relay, we will just be interested in broadcast and point to point. And the state is a description of those links, such as, is it a DR? Is it a backup designated router? Is it a point to point link? Its cost, its metrics, MTU, etc, etc. Now, by sharing these LSAs, each OSPF device builds a network topology called the link state database, and it finds the shortest path based on the least cost for each destination prefix, with each router in an OSPF area having an identical link state database to ensure accurate routing knowledge. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the protocol, let's cover some general knowledge facts that you may need to know for the exam. OSPF encapsulates its data directly in IP port 89. This is unlike um, something like BGP that uses TCP 179 or RIP that uses UDP 520. And each OSPF router sends a link state advertisement, which is an LSA, describing its connections to the other routers and it will apply the Dijkstra algorithm to calculate the best routes allowing the router to use his LSAs to build the link state database and populate its routing table. The Dijkstra algorithm shows the shortest path from one device to every other device in the area. Now, depending on the message type, OSPF uses either unicast messages or multicast messages sent to 224.005 sent by all OSPF routers or 224.006 sent by an OSPF designated router. OSPF is quite a big subject, so what we're going to do, we're going to start off with the configuration and cover the theory as we go along. So let's have a look at our topology that we'll be working with today. We have two routers, there's R1 and R4, and the connection between them will be connected with 10.1.14, because it's 104.0, with R1 having .1 and R4 having .4. I'm also going to configure a couple of loopbacks on R4 just to get the point across. And the point today is that we know that each router within an area needs to keep its own individual copy of its link state database. But because they're all in the same area and they need to know which routers are sending the LSAs, each router within an area needs its own unique identifier. This is a 32-bit number in decimal format and this is called the router ID. So let's jump onto R1 and do the configuration there first. And we don't have any interfaces configured here, so I'll do that now. And I'm going to configure that interface for OSPF. This is done under edit protocols OSPF. We're going to put everything in area zero. And what I'm going to say is set interface GE.001.0 for OSPF. Okay, it looks good. And let's do the same for R4. Now, just before I do that configuration, let's just go through a bit of the theory. When a router is selecting its router ID, there are three factors. First, it will look at the highest configured loopback address. Sorry, the lowest configured loopback address. If there's no loop back address configured, then it's going to look for the lowest configured IP address. Now, it doesn't matter if these IP addresses are taking part in OSPF. It's just going to look for the lowest configured IP address, which has been configured on the actual device. To prove that, let's just configure one of the other interfaces. Edit interface, ge.0.0. .0 .0 
zero family inet address of um, what's lower than 10 let's say seven dot six dot six dot four slash 24 well and we're going to commit this and the only reason I've done that address is just a random address I picked from the top of my head but because it's lower than 10.1.14.1 this should be the router ID and it goes the the lowest one is the IP address the next one up will be the lowest configured loopback address and the top the one that takes precedence will be if you configure the um, router ID manually okay so let's jump on to R4 and do the configuration over there got some fat finger typing today guys I have a request from you if you're enjoying the free content I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June but I can only do that if you give me the play special do you want to know what the play special is press like and yeah subscribe okay back to the video so the first one is 4.4.4.4 slash 32 and we're going to do another one just to show that it's the lowest configured loopback address so let's just say 5.5.5.5 slash 32 you can also just say set interfaces all and it will configure all interfaces for OSPF Brilliant. Let's commit that. And let's look for our OSPF neighbors. Now we're expecting that um, our OSPF neighbor has a router ID of 7.6.6.4 and we should have a router ID of 4.4.4.4. .4 .4 .4. Okay, so we can see that our neighbor ID is 7.6.6.4. We're just waiting for neighbourship to come up. Let's do a ping, make sure we've got the IP address incorrect. Yep, yeah, we've configured 10.1.14.4 on our side. Let's have a look at that neighborship again. And it's full. And we can see that our neighbor ID is 7.6.6.4. If I now also run a show OSPF interface, maybe. Yes. So here we can see that um, our neighbor is 7.6.6.4. It's the DR and we are 4.4.4.4 we can also change that manually if we go into the edit routing options and we say set router id to our local one let's make it higher than that so let's say it's 10.10.10.10 .10 now because it's been set manually i'm expecting that this value here should change this one won't because we're not doing anything here. But this value here should change to 10.10.10.10 because even though it's higher, if you configure the router ID manually, that takes precedence. Let's commit that. And run show OSPF interface. And here we can see that it has actually changed. And also in this video, we managed to also, as a side product, configure single area OSPF. So this video covered router IDs and single area OSPF configuration. And I'll see you in the next video. Question one, what does OSPF stand for?
Question two, what kind of advertisement does the OSPF protocol use? Question 3. Which of the following is an example of an OSPF link type on Junos devices? Question 4. What network topology is built after sharing LSAs between network devices? Question 5. What port does OSPF use to directly encapsulate data? Question 6. What does LSA mean? Question 7. What algorithm does OSPF apply to calculate the best route to network devices? Question 8. Where are multicast OSPF messages sent?